Yeah, my wife's right. I am a perfectionist. Okay. Finally. Getting down to that sanding sealer. I'll take this thing off the mount and uh, pour some right down its neck. So that's pretty nice on the on the very top of it there. But I'll pour some clear down its neck to make sure we've got it everywhere. But you know, this is kind of like the big reveal, you know? This really shows what your wood looks like. I think I say that every video, don't I? This, as usual, is a very nice looking piece of wood. And the other mistake I am usually making, but I'm going to try not to today, would be to say, ah, I'll take this thing off the spindle, out of the clamp, and I will worry about finishing it by hand later. It turns out, you know, I had, I had gotten pretty good at, at brushing on polyurethane, but you know what? That's really not the best way to go if you want it to be shiny and pretty. And of course, I do. Um, come to the realization that you really have to use some sort of a... Hey, Bender Dog! I thought that you thought that there was too many chemicals in here, and you were like, eh, I'm not sure if I want to hang around for chemicals. All right. Let's be in the show. How you doing, bud? Hmm? Is there a bunch of sawdust on there? Yeah, there, that's better. There's a pretty bender. Show them your pretty face. Let's do a pretty bender face. Bender photo bombs again. I'm gonna have to start a whole channel with Bender photo bombs. Oh, he's a good, good boy. Ooh, ooh. He's a talking boy too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was me, not him. This is a piece that I, I. Uh, Effectively ruined with my new buffing wheel. Everything but the signature on the bottom. That turned out really nice. Everywhere else I got it too close and I burned it and I chopped little, uh, if it's just a complete thing. Put you guys back into focus over here. This was the prototype. Oh, I guess I'll keep it back over here. This was the prototype that I was looking at for this uh, design, and we ran into this, and that was bark, and I think it goes clear through to here, and this sucker, since I turned that, has grown this crack, so I guess it wasn't completely dry, so this thing will be good for something, but not this. Not throwing in the towel. I'm just throwing the piece of. <laughs> I'm throwing in the towel, but kind of 
I don't know what the expression should be. <laughs> I'm showing the towel. <laughs> it's sitting near the the uh, junk heap. And yes, I am thinking about putting some resin in it. Maybe that's the way to go. Hey, cat, I thought you went outside. Oh, did you follow me back in here when I went out to put the trash out? Oh, I bet you did. Are you going to be photobombing me too? Where'd you go? Well, Bender says, oh, no, no. If anybody's photobombing you, it's going to be me and not some stupid cat. I hear you, bro. <laughs> so, um, ta-da, I believe, is the expression. And let's get you properly set up to zoom in. That's really close to just right. And voila. This right here is nice. Isn't that have this this big pattern? Now if it had a little pupil right there, that could be an eyeball. Or maybe a lipstick kiss. Pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. So I'm going to take it off and pour some down its neck. That's not going to be too interesting, so I will spare you that detail. Actually, I'm going to turn you back on. <laughs> there. I completely filled it. So I got a one inch hole that's like, oh, boy. Let's not guess, let's measure. Eight inches deep. Of course, I spilled a bunch of poor sealer here. So we will make use of this stuff. Because on the top, you know, on the end grain of the wood, this stuff just eats it. So the bottom is a big end grain on the bottom, so just kind of use that for a little dipping pot. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't leave too much sawdust, sawdust, sand dust, sawdust in there. So when I pour it back into my container of sanding sealer, it won't foul the whole thing up too bad. I really hope that these cracks would be less visible on here. I guess they are. You know, frankly, they are. I think the more polish you get on there, the less noticeable they shall be. And yeah, I guess I am repeatedly coating this with sanding sealer. in part because, you know, there's a very, very, very popular brand of sanding sealer that is buku expensive. As a matter of fact, I saw one of my uh, fellow uh, 
turning addicts uh, actually knock over <laughs> that particular brand of uh, sanding sealer, I was like, oh lord, no, not the sanding sealer. Because you pay a lot more for a very small size of that particular stuff. And you know what? I think it does work a little better. I do think it works a little better. Um, well, I'm going to swing out and see if I can get you guys a better view of this thing. Uh, of course, battery dying. Okay, there we are, freshly coated in sand and sealer. Only hazard of having a German Shepherd, well, okay, not the only hazard. One of the main hazards of having a German Shepherd come and do photo bombs is they bring gigantic wads of fur with them and tend to distribute them about your shop. Anyway, here we are. I don't think I'm going to uh, pause and take you down. I think that the, again, I think I've said it 12 times. This right here is, is one of the cooler features. Although, this down here is pretty cool too. So, don't know yet if we're okay. So, our next step is just going to be trying to get this completely dry. Turn it on. You overdid it if it's flying off of that at a thousand RPM. You probably overdid it. And you know what? We really just need to set that aside and let it dry for a while. That's what we're going to do. Let's do something else. Hang on a sec. So, I was using a different brand of high friction polish. And I, I basically ran out of it. And looking uh, to replace that, it seemed like the cost was pretty astronomical. And there was other options, so I thought I'd try a few of them. And without uh, mentioning any brand names, maybe you'll recognize the bottle. But uh, this is the kind we're going to try today. And according to this guy's instructions, we're supposed to carefully apply a little bit of it with the lathe off, and then come back and get friction on it with a clean cloth. So that is precisely what we shall do. Kind of seems like the wood's eating it. Keep going with the recommended application. This still seems so dry over here. I just can hardly believe that I got any on it. Well, now it's kind of starting to tell me yes, there is some. Okay. Never mind. You know, I, I think in the past, I thought to myself, you know, oh, 
high friction polish. They must need high RPM to achieve high friction. And it even says on some of them, you know, use you know, 3000 RPM. And I'm like, yeah, that's awful fast. That is like blazingly scary fast on my lathe anyway. And, um, almost always wound up with it streaked and wind up sanding it and streaking it and sanding it some more and I think we need more of it here on this middle path definitely so stop okay stop now, clean cloth with friction. Here we go. Okay, get you shiny quite as fast as the other, but definitely does seem to work. To make it shiny. things already you can see look where it's where I've tried to apply friction I get this maybe I'm using the wrong cloth German Shepherd. Yep, I'm taking off my gloves. I want to get this stuff on your camera. Hey, don't go away. Come here. Come here, you big skellywag. Hey, Leandro. Come here. Widen out the shot if I can. Bender, go back up. Come here. You're not in trouble. Now sit. That's my boy. That's my boy. And there's Gib 5. Yes, that's a good boy. Yes, there. Now you can see the pretty boy. Yes. This just a boy. Oh. I tried to put a blanket for you. <laughs> what? Gigantic footies. Did you guys see that? 
Hey, give me five. Come on. Good boy. You'll <laughs> cut my toenails. I don't want you cutting my toenails. Nobody cut your toenails. You're such a big booby. You make those certain of noises when I'm trying to cut your toenails or make you be on camera and show everybody how pretty you are. But you're like, ooh, 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 ooh. What? What do you want? Oh, my loving, just this my sweet, sweet, sweet boy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A little gritty. I think it would probably benefit from a little bit of. assessment of if it's actually getting better or if it's getting worse or if additional coats of this stuff are not really doing anything because I definitely want way more build up than this. And so it could be that that expensive brand of high friction polish is truly the way to go. Let's try. Oop, see, I forgot to put on my gloves. And, uh, Seems like I'm getting, and I keep saying that, I'm getting better build up here than I am down here. This infamous total fail. Uh, mandrel polishing and we are at the point where we need to do the polishing now this is the buffing wheel that I used before and it said to put it on 3000 rpm I ain't going anywhere near that this time but I would like to try and just use this pad on this to see if we can go through the process of, of, of uh, right I don't know if I can get it on a piece, but let's try. Um, I think it works. Although I'm not. Like I say, this thing is cold. I wonder. It's not hurting it. Run up it against it. I sure hope you can. Let's zoom you in. Oh yeah, get you pointed a little bit better. That. There we go. What do you think? It's definitely brighter from where I'm sitting. So here comes step number two. 
I need to burn that too. Or it won't look right. I hope it was just against the edge. That's where I had it. <laughs> See if we can get that white off of there. There's it's white in a couple of places here. Well, I wonder if I could just I guess you gotta have some friction or else that stuff ain't going nowhere. Okay. Okay. Yep, that got it. Oh, except for you forgot that one right there. Okay. Good, good, and good. Why didn't it burn there? Mm. I'm gonna burn it. I thought, okay, I burned one on accident. I have to burn a matching one. I'm happy with them, but they don't match. It disappears right there. Dog number three buffer. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is looking pretty good. Um, this is debatable, but the rest of it's pretty nice. So here we go with this one. I forget what this is. They tell you, but I forget. <laughs> system. Oh, corner and couldn't reach, I think. Yeah. It looks as good as it's going to get. So you should take it down. Put it on the belt sander, sand the bottom, don't make it unlevel with the high grit sandpaper. And this one will call finished. Matter of fact, I'm going to unscrew it off this fixture right here before your eyes. For the first time, I only have one of these. Devices, maybe I need to get another one, huh? And presto. So there's the bottom that needs to be worked on. But this is the vase itself, which I'm pretty happy with. I can you guys see this? You've been looking at it like that for days, right? I don't know why this part of the wood is at some different grain and as that grain grows it goes you can see the line where it goes zoop, zoop, right through there and that's exactly the grain line that does not want to burn I hope it looks okay with these burn lines that I put in it first one by accident and I said well crap I can't have one without the other so I put on another There's something I could have done better with it. I would be happy to get any feedback you would have, or if you had someone that you held in high esteem who, who was a good wood uh, person, who would uh, be willing to give me some feedback, I'd love it if you would go ahead and uh, forward this video to them. 
and uh, again whether I was making it better or making it worse I hope you like watching <laughs> so once again here we are post uh, polishing a look got some sand uh, sawdust on it from uh, flattening out the bottom which uh, turned out pretty good I think and I don't know maybe we'll try and send some of that out before we go ahead and autograph that baby and then hit it with some pore sealer and then we'll see what we can do about polishing it with the uh, wheels hooked up to the mandrel that's the way we should do it so trying to fix a few of these scratches here can you see I bet you can see them. Okay, back in a minute. All right. Some belt sander, some just sat there and sanded it. So, I don't think it's a whole lot better than that. So, time for the burned in signature. I'll show you that when it's done. And here I have. Uh, tried my best to engrave my name on the bottom which is the by far the most just like my hand hurts from trying to push so hard with that soldering iron to get it to burn it in there do I need to get invest in a laser does this look really bad how do you sign your stuff leave me a comment is this is this bad or is this bad because I don't think it's bad okay here we have the sanding sealer applied still pretty happy with the way it's sanded although the very first thing you will notice is all the sanding defects that you have made when you put on <laughs> the sanding sealer. It has that magical quality about it. That's the reduced profile. Um, we're still quite a ways from the... Uh, let me get my measuring stick. I think we're still quite a ways away from the uh, bottom. Yeah, like an inch. That's cool. Put this thing together in, in the opposite order. So this is number three, this is number two, and this is number one over here. So this is the number one wax. And where is the object? The art? Oh, right here. And this is the sanding sealered bottom of the genie vase. So, we're going to try polishing it with this. We're not going to go anywhere near the fast RPMs that they recommended. probably put too much polish on the wheels themselves but uh, wow I think I'm pretty impressed with the shine on the bottom I think I'm pretty impressed with the shine overall I think that this is done out of sight I'm happy with that. 